In this video, I'd like to address a common problem with uh, modular synths, well, I guess analog synths in general. And this little fellow, the uh, Moog Subharmonicon, is perfect to demonstrate this point. Uh, presets or patch sheets can be incredibly difficult to replicate or recall a patch. In the manual, Moog points that out, but also brings up a very important point. Presets should be used as a starting point from which to begin experimentation, especially with the Subharmonicon. There's been many times I've tried to build a patch from a recall sheet and been very underwhelmed. I guess sometimes I've screwed it up, or sometimes the patches are just meant to demonstrate the capabilities of the synth rather than be musical. Or maybe my idea of musical is different from theirs. I don't know. Anyway, in this video I'm going to take one of the stock patches, and this one is actually a pretty good sounding patch right out of the box and uh, demonstrate how I explore the patch. I'll probably do some more videos with the stock subharmonicon patches. Some of them are really weird and it's a good challenge to see what you can come up with. I think I'll also talk a little bit about music theory in this video and then do a longer jam at the end. I'll put an index in the description. But for now let's get started. Okay, I've got all the knobs here set at their proper locations. Just got to do the final patching. Uh, what do we have? We've got VCFEG modulating uh, pitch width of VCO1 and sequence 2 modulating the uh, cutoff. All right, so we're ready to go. Let's hear it. So these lines here are telling us to play with these parameters. So it's probably a good idea to hear what they sound like first. Okay, so we've got two octaves. Um, let's go for three instead. So I'm just going to tune this up an octave. There we go. So there's our high octave. And there's our mid octave. And that one's doubling the high. Now we're good. Three octaves. Okay, great. Hear those again. There's the middle. And there's the top. All right, we'll turn them all off and let's listen to uh, oscillator two. All right, right now we're not hearing anything really. That's because the pulse width is being overly modulated by the VCF envelope right now. So now we hear it. So this is a Splix, it's a passive attenuator or mixer. I think this is a great thing to have if you've got a subharmonicon because there's no built-in attenuators. So that's what I'm gonna use it as. So here we go, so we can just hear it bring in the modulation slowly. That's pretty good there. Yeah, these little Splix things, I think they're about $5. They're invaluable for um, a lot of things. All right, uh, let's turn down the cutoff and let's have a listen. Okay, two octaves down and one octave down. Okay, so everything's in octaves. Let's bring back in sub two on oscillator two. There's our patch preset. Sounds okay, but delay will really help this. All right. Sounds fantastic already. Okay, let's explore a little bit. Now we're hearing the 3 over 2 polyrhythm from the sequencer a little clearer. Boy, that sounds great. Okay, 
Yeah, it's a great patch. Okay, let's play with the VCF attack. Very subtle movements change it a lot, so listen carefully. changing where the accents are. With longer attack times, the um, envelope isn't always re-triggered on the uh, subharmonicon. Uh, it gives you a lot more variation in the rhythms and polyrhythms. Super cool. Cool, almost sounds like a compressor sidechain here. Pretty much all the way open. Nice. I wish the uh, attack and decay were CV controllable. Tons of variation just from playing with those two knobs. Okay, let's add in the matriarch. Subharmonicon really sort of demands that you play it live. So much variation from just such small movements. Well, as factory patches go, I think this one's a keeper. Well done. Okay, let's have a listen to the sequences individually and see what we're actually playing. Turn that down and we'll just listen to Oscillator 2. F, A, and C. We've got F major triad. Okay, now let's listen to the sequence Oscillator 1 is playing on sequencer 1. First time I made this patch, I got it wrong, but I ended up with something pretty cool. G, B, and D, G major triad. Okay, so we've got two major triads, a tone apart, so it's time to talk some music theory. Here's a triad coupling or hexatonic scale cheat sheet I made for my real job a few years ago. I'll put a link to the full file in the description. Uh, but the basic idea is, by combining triads, you can imply a bunch of different harmony. The uh, subharmonicon has two oscillators with two subs each, so essentially six voices, so it works great with triads and perfect for triad coupling. Uh, in this patch, I'm just dealing with one triad per oscillator, or one triad per sequence, so that makes this a bit easier. But really, the available options with the sequencer and oscillators and sub-oscillators makes it pretty much endless. 
As mentioned in this patch, we've got two major triads a tone apart, so there's about eight different conventional chord scale options. Uh, in reality, these aren't all that conventional. Some are pretty dissonant. I'll highlight some of the uh, avoid notes. But really, if you own a subharmonicon, it's probably easier to just embrace the dissonance. That being said, the more you know, the better you sound, so uh, let's have a listen to this harmony. Okay, C sus major 7, not a common chord. D minor 13, this one's a good one. E Phrygian, a bit spooky. The voicing of the triad obviously also affects our perception of the harmony. This wouldn't be my choice for Phrygian. I like this one. F Lydian works great. G13, also a bit on the dissonant side. This is kind of an Aeolian sound, but really sounds more like an F chord, really. So far, the F Lydian and D Dorian are the only ones I actually really like, but this last one is pretty cool. B Alter from Melodic Minor. Really, every note should be an avoid note, but it somehow works. So that's about all the uh, conventional harmony I could think of for two triads a tone apart. And there, there might be some more, but those eight were the ones I could come up with. All right, those were our options with two static triads. Let's see what happens if we alter the sequence. <laughs> Gotta be quick. These knobs are tiny. Cool, that worked pretty well. We'll have to experiment with that some other time.